GameRanks presents 10 PS4 hacks and tricks you probably didn't know. From hidden convenience tricks to software and physical hardware hacks, we've got all kinds of PS4 users covered here. We designed this list for you guys to get the maximum use out of your PlayStation 4. So let's get started with number 10. We're gonna start off with one that might seem like a no-brainer to the hardcore crowd, but a lot of people don't realize this. Are you a PlayStation Plus member? Well, here's our advice. All those free PlayStation Plus games, stockpile them. Yes, if you just own a PS4 and PlayStation Plus, you can download the free games every month. But what a lot of people don't realize is if you log into your Sony account on the PSN website, you have access to all the free PlayStation Plus games. Those are the PlayStation Plus games on Vita and PS3 and PS4. So really, you should stockpile them. You got nothing to lose. And once you download and claim them, you own them forever on your library. Even when the free on PlayStation Plus promotion expires, you're still going to be able to own those games and play them whenever you want. And it's really great if you're looking towards the future. See a bunch of free PlayStation Vita games, but you don't own a Vita yet? Well, download them all anyway, stockpile them, and save them for the winter. Because then if you finally save up and buy yourself a shiny new PlayStation Vita, you got a pile of games already waiting for you digitally. And number nine, a little known fact in the software menu settings, is the fact that if you want to take a video clip or screenshot without navigating to the actual share menu and slowing things down, you can simply tap the share button twice and it'll start capturing video. Or you can go into the share settings and change the share button control type for easy screenshots. So then automatically a screenshot only takes a tap of the share button. If you're a social gamer, I highly recommend changing the share button to a press and hold to bring up the actual share menu. You want to be able to quickly and easily capture screenshots to show to your friends, and this is the best way. It might sound like a basic settings change, but this makes things incredibly simple and much easier for a user. At number 8, did you know you could use a PlayStation Vita as an extra DualShock controller for the PS4? Well, now you know. Yeah, the Vita has a lot of tricks that work with the PlayStation 4, like second screen and all that jazz. But if you're in a bind and you have somebody else that wants to play couch co-op with you, and you don't have an extra DualShock 4 controller because you're so damn expensive, use your Vita. A lot of you guys probably know that you can use Remote Play to beam the game that's playing on the PS4 onto the PlayStation Vita. The only problem with that is that you have to use the same PSN account on the Vita as the PlayStation 4. However, that can be easily surpassed by using Remote Play, and then take over the session, and then with the controller you sign in as a guest or another profile. And then boom, there you go. You and a friend can play co-op on PlayStation 4. Sure, the Vita controller takes a little getting used to, but you'll figure it out. Hey, it's a cheap, easy, and quick solution. At number 7, if you want to feel really cool like Tony Stark and talk to your game console, but you don't have an Xbox One or you just can't be bothered with the Kinect, well, you can actually use voice commands through the headset mic that comes with the PlayStation 4. Yes, the PlayStation 4 does have voice commands that work with the PlayStation camera. That being said, not a lot of people bought the PlayStation camera, so you can use voice controls through the included headset. There's a tiny little microphone tucked away on the volume slider on the little headset. So when it's plugged into the controller and when you enable voice controls in the PlayStation settings, all you have to do is say, PlayStation, followed by any command. The commands are pretty basic, but they do work fairly decently. You can say the name of a game, start game, open up Music Unlimited, access your library, bring up the internet browser. It's pretty nifty, and it works, I'd say, 85% of the time, which is pretty good for voice controllers. It's a small, little-known feature that might make your gaming life a little bit easier. At number six, we have that PlayStation app available for iOS and Android. Use that app to your advantage, because there's a lot of features on it that can really help you out. While the app is still pretty buggy sometimes, there's a lot of things you can do with it that'll make your life a hell of a lot easier. Is there a game that's on flash sale, but you're nowhere near your PlayStation 4? Well, look it up on the app and purchase it right there. The coolest part is if you want it to be ready when you come home from work or something, you can link your PS4 up with the app, and as long as your PlayStation 4 is on standby and connected to Wi-Fi, you'll be able to wake it up from the app and start downloading games. Not only that, but if you're sending your friend party chat invites or messages or even in-game chats, you can use the PlayStation app as a keyboard to type on your screen on PlayStation 4. And it makes things a hell of a lot easier and it makes typing much quicker because it feels like texting. And at number 5, we have another one that a lot of people have missed, even though it's so simple. I'm even stupid enough that I didn't realize this until probably a year after owning a PlayStation 4. You can use a phone charger to charge your controller, you idiot. Yes, I know a lot of you guys will probably make fun of people who didn't know in the comments, including myself, but for a while, I had that short PlayStation 4 cable, meaning I had to be so close to my console in order to charge my controller and play at the same time. Of course, you can charge your controller over standby mode via the PS4, but sometimes that's not enough. If you have an Android phone with a micro USB charger, you can just plug in your controller and charge it next to you while you play and make your life 10 times easier. Yes, that is probably one of the more simple life hacks we've ever put on a list, but seriously, some people don't realize this. We actually saw a lot of people on forums and Reddit who had no idea and were pleasantly surprised, so there. 
And at number four on our list, we have a real hack. Do you want to hack your PS4 and play pirated games for practically nothing? Well, move to Brazil. Yes, Brazil is legendary for its blatant piracy, with over 50% of all software licenses in Brazil not being original or legit. Yes, apparently there are retail stores in Brazil offering customers who buy PS4s to install 10 pirated games on their PS4 for about $100. That being said, that is a pretty high price in Brazil, but you're getting a bunch of games, and they're technically free. Of course, we're not condoning piracy, but if you're one of those crazy people that want your games hacked onto your PS4, and if you want to maximize the use of your hardware and you don't care of having some Brazilian guy open it up and alter it, well, then the possibilities are endless. Just be sure not to update your console firmware, because you know Sony is probably right on hackers' heels. At number three, guys, listen, we are players of video games in the 21st century. It's 2015 now, and games need constant <laughs> updates and patches, and it's awful and terrible and annoying. That being said, with this newer generation of consoles, you can make your life 10 times easier. Setting up automatic downloads will save your life. When you go into settings and switch on automatic update, your PS4 system searches for game updates, system updates, and content. And if you guys own a PS4, you know there's always something to download, whether it's a game update, a software update, a patch, anything. So if you're not too concerned about banning, with or using power, definitely leave your PlayStation on standby with this setting enabled because stuff will download while you sleep like an angel. Then when you actually go to play a game, you don't have to wait and sit there while something downloads or installs because it's already been done for you, whether you like it or not without you even realizing. Again, this seems like an obvious one, but some people out there just don't know this shit. At number two, take advantage of this cool trick. Certain new TVs have a setting called HDMI Device Link. The newer Sony Bravia model TVs do have this, and certain Samsung ones do too, I believe. If your TV does have this feature, go onto your PS4, go to your console settings, and switch on Enable HDMI Device Link. Your newer TV will recognize this and display PlayStation 4 in the input source list. And this will mean you can do a couple cool things with your TV and your console. It's almost like they coexist a little bit better now. Because if your TV and your PS4 are both on standby, you can hit your controller's PlayStation button to turn on the console, and it'll also turn on the TV. And then and on the other hand, if you're using the TV to watch television or something, switching the input to the PlayStation 4 input will wake the PlayStation 4 up from standby mode. I don't know about you, but while that only seems like it's just saving 5 seconds of turning on the power button, it's a pretty badass feature. To have your TV and your PlayStation 4 talk to each other is pretty nice, and it almost feels a bit like a PC. So HDMI device link. Look it up. If you got it, use that feature. And at number one, we got a physical hardware trick for you. Say you bring a game over to a friend's house and you're playing it on his PS4. Now, what if suddenly the power goes out or his PlayStation just completely stops working? That disc is stuck in the drive, right? There's no way you can get it out. And it sucks for you, you're just gonna have to wait until it can get fixed or, you know, whatever. Well, it turns out there's actually a trick. There is a screw on the outside that manually releases the disc. All you have to do is remove the plastic shiny part of the PlayStation 4 and it's right there. You can save yourself a lot of trouble there, especially with some PlayStation 4 drives already being kind of false. Just be careful though, the screw is really crappy and small, so be careful not to strip the screw or break it because then you're totally shit out of luck. So there you have it guys, those were 10 PS4 hacks slash tricks that some of you probably didn't know. We designed this list for you guys to get the maximum use out of your PlayStation 4, be it through settings, hardware tricks, whatever. So we really hope that you did learn a thing or two and eased your gaming life. Let us know in the comments if you learned anything in this video, or if you have some tricks of your own that you want to share with anybody else. Or let us know if you really hate us. And of course, if you did learn a thing or two, or if we made your life a bit easier, maybe give us a like, because that's the best way you can help us out, it's almost like giving us a tip. And if you are new and this is your first time coming around, listen, we put out videos every single day, so subscribing is the best thing you can do. But guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.